Let's talk about breastfeeding. I get asked all the time about my journey with breastfeeding, my story, the schedule that I have for it on, the products that I use. So that is what I'm talking about today in Breastfeeding 101. Bras, bras, brassiers, bras, bras. Something that I wanna make so totally clear. However you feed your baby is awesome. You're doing a great job. No mom shaming here. Breastfeeding, bottle fed, as long as they're fed, they a okay. bringing you guys the most requested video lately on my channel a video on breastfeeding I've had so many questions and so many requests to do to do this video and I just wanted to make sure that a lot of these products and a lot of these methods that I used for myself personally were tried and true and I'm sitting here with a baby that is almost five months still breastfeeding feeling like I have really been successful at breastfeeding now also why you should watch this video Yes, breastfeeding came very easily to me in the beginning, but then something happened in the middle of my experience with breastfeeding that caused my supply to plummet. So I also was in the same boat as a lot of mothers who are struggling to get their milk supply up. So I had a lot of experience with the supplements that I took and the pumping schedule that I did to get my supply back up. So don't think if you're watching this video that this is not, this is not a video for you. Um, it is. I have dealt with basically everything that I could deal with in the realm of breastfeeding. So keep watching this video to find out all about the products that I use, all about the schedule that I use, all about the methods and the creams and the bras and the pads and all of the things. I knew in my mind that I wanted to breastfeed and I knew that I was gonna do everything that I possibly could short of like stressing me out completely and making me not a great mother because of the stress it was causing me to breastfeed. I wanted to do everything that I could possibly do to breastfeed my baby. And I think a lot of times when you have that mentality going in, because the first part is hard until your milk comes in, it can be super, super helpful. I also want to make the point that if you cannot breastfeed your baby or if it didn't work out for you, you are not a bad mother. Do not feel bad. As long as your baby is getting fed, that's awesome. If you can breastfeed and if you want to breastfeed, it's wonderful and they say it's super great for the baby and bonding and all of this stuff but if you're not able to please know this is not a channel of mom shamers and um, I still think that you are an incredible mother I had a c-section with Ford and the second that they pulled him out and put him onto my chest skin to skin he immediately latched and started breastfeeding like here I am a first-time mother I'm like is this normal is he supposed to be doing this? So I'm telling you guys that story because clearly like my baby in particular, he just went right for it. And I feel like a lot of this stuff that I did around this uh, was awesome and it really helped, but also he was a baby that really took to it well. I also delivered at um, a hospital in Nashville called St. Thomas Midtown. St. Thomas Midtown and a lot of hospitals have lactation consultants on staff at the hospital or like that can come in at the hospital, please, take them up on it. They are professionals at this. They taught me a lot of the things that I'm about to share with you with my experience. And every single day, at least one time while I was in the hospital, I had a lactation consultant come in and help me with everything from my latch to the schedule to how I hold the baby to the, just everything. And I attribute the majority of my success with breastfeeding with those professionals helping me in the hospital. So if you have the ability to do that at your hospital and always ask, I highly recommend that. I'm gonna try and take myself back to five months ago when I delivered at the hospital, and I can just remember, like it's just such a blur, and you're in such like a flurry of emotions. Your milk hasn't come in yet, typically, unless you're like Wonder Woman, and if your milk comes in immediately, that's awesome. I don't know if that can even happen. But in the beginning of your breastfeeding journey, you're, um, you're gonna have what they call colostrum come in. 
This is really good for the baby apparently. And these hours, these initial hours in the hospital are very critical. It's critical, they say, to do a lot of skin to skin contact, which I did so much of. In fact, whenever I got home from the hospital, I did so much skin to skin. I like never had my baby clothed. I actually thought I was supposed to continue doing skin to skin, which I don't know, I, was, I think I was wrong in that. Like, <laughs> to clothe the babies but i attribute maybe some of the success of becoming such a great breast milk producer and an over producer even to doing like constant skin to skin there in the beginning who knows once you're able to start like feeding your baby they'll say like i can't remember it was between 24 and 48 hours when i did that what they called cluster feed and it's where the baby wants to keep feeding and feeding and feeding and what the nurses told me was that it's a baby's like natural way of helping your milk to come in so this is the part where luckily um i had uh, access to a lot of like nipple creams and a lot of pads and a lot of help to help the baby latch correctly because during this um period a lot of people will get cracks and a lot of people will get so sore that they give up and they get frustrated and they're like my milk's not coming in so i had a lot of help during this cluster feed and i learned a lot about a baby's latch i think that that was initially something that helped me tremendously had i not had lactation consultants there with me i would have thought that as long as a baby's mouth is on your breast and it's sucking that that is great and you're breastfeeding come to find out the way that the baby puts their positions their mouth onto the breast is so important it was night and day for me whenever i was initially feeding ford in the hospital it hurt it felt like a pinching sensation and then when the lactation consultant started coming in and helping me with this i realized if it feels like a pinch or it's uncomfortable it's usually not right and it's not good for you or the baby so when he would come off of my breast they would show me it's so weird to like be doing this video and keep saying the word like nipple and breast because i've never said those words in a video before but I want to help you guys so we're going to talk about all the things breasts so when he would come off of my breast if the nipple was flat on one side or if it wasn't round um and if you felt that pinching, pinching sensation the baby's latch was not correct so i learned all different methods but the the biggest one being if it felt like that i would pull the baby off i would make sure the baby had a wide open mouth sometimes to do that you can put their little noses up to the nipple and they can open their mouth really really wide you want to have a wide mouth to attach to your breast and you can feel the difference immediately when they get that latch right immediately sometimes when ford didn't have like a large kind of mouth latch onto my breast i would take the bottom of his chin the nurses showed me how to do this and i would pull the bottom of his mouth open to get more of that breast into his mouth the rule of thumb with that is if they if, if it feels like a pinching sensation and if it's uncomfortable it typically is incorrect I'll continue to pull the baby off make sure they have a really wide mouth latch to where it feels comfortable for both you and the baby i mean i guess you don't know what your baby if your baby's comfortable transitioning from like the hospital and like that milk coming in phase to coming home so i had my baby c-section on a tuesday i think they say like I don't know you can google this like i said i'm not a professional but i think that it's like three to three or so days three to five days when the milk comes in uh to to where it switches from that colostrum to the breast milk if you have a typical delivery like a vaginal birth um but i think if you have a c-section they say it's more like five to seven days it takes a little bit longer for your milk to come in three days it took for my milk to come in and the reason that i know like you can kind of feel it coming it almost feels like in my breasts felt like a pulled muscle like when my milk started coming in and i could immediately like see the milk kind of coming in onto ford's face and uh like dripping out the side of his mouth and i was like yes like it came in since i was at home i had to get my baby on a schedule uh, at the hospital they told me to breastfeed every three hours in the hospital um i think we kind of stuck to that i can't really remember during the cluster feeds it was different but so i actually set a timer on my phone and every three hours i would have the alarm go off and people have different methods like do you wake up your baby do you not wake up your baby whatever like i hated waking for it up to feed him but they told me it was so important so i think for the first about six weeks i woke him up and every three hours i fed him when you are breastfeeding you don't know the amounts that the baby's getting so i got an app on my phone to time it and i made sure that i was feeding him like at least 15 minutes per side or at least 12 minutes you can't really tell like how efficient your baby is but you can tell like if they're gaining weight and i used to track like how much he peed and pooped also like in the day to make sure that he was actually getting like enough breast milk um and then i went to timing it so let me show you the app that i got for that so here is the app that i used so 
what I would do is when I felt like he latched and he started sucking milk, I would push left. And then anytime he would pause, I would pause it. Or whenever he was done feeding, I would switch to the right breast. So this really helped me. And you can also go back to your logs or your analytics. I haven't used this in a while because I only used it for like two or three months. Um, and you can see all the times. And if he fed the left or the right. Um, and just all the specifics of that. So this is called, sorry about my notifications. This is hashtag mom life. It's called baby feed timer. Once he got like 10 weeks, 12 weeks, like a little bit older, then I started going longer stretches in the night because Ford, um, I I'll do a full like, um, sleeping video also, but Ford started sleeping through the night pretty early. Um, so I tried to stretch out those three hours to four hours once he got around, um, I think it was around 10 or 12 weeks. I'll have to look back and, and make sure, but three, every three hours. And I used that app. Now for me, it was critical to have one of those like swivel glider nursing chairs with an ottoman downstairs in my entire setup with all of the things that I needed. Because you know, as a new mom, especially a new nursing mom, you were going to spend like 75% of your time in the spot where you nurse. So it was really important to me um, to create like an atmosphere downstairs in my, I got a glider chair from Restoration. That was my splurge that I like loved. I got it in white and I quickly realized that with a breastfeeding baby, I was gonna have to cover the entire chair with burp cloths. <laughs> So that's what I did. There were things that I used that I attribute to, um, I never had a cracked nipple, I never had mastitis, I never had um, any of those typical problems because I took such good care of myself while I was breastfeeding. This was something that I bought in the hospital that I, I cannot live without and I cannot stress to you how much this helped me. So I got like nipple creams or butters, whatever you call them. I got the Medellicon, I got the Lana, Lana or whatever, Lana, I can't remember um, exactly what it's called. I tried so many different ones. They were greasy. I felt like I was still drying out. This one is the one, it's called Mother Love. I get it off Amazon now. I got it from the hospital and this was my savior. I can't say enough about this. Every single time I breastfeed my baby, uh, or I breastfed my baby, like in the first three months, I would say, uh, when you're still kind of in that phase where your nipples can get kind of sore or cracked or dry, I would use this nipple cream. This was a savior to mine, a very much a must have. Also in the beginning, I would wear a lot of these. So I would put on the cream and then I would put this in my bra like every once in a while. I'd say like once a day. Um, in the beginning, I did it a lot more. And I kept these in my fridge so they were cold. They say, though, you're supposed to alternate this and this so that you don't get bacteria behind it. I did them both at the same time. I don't know technically what you're supposed to do. It worked for me. These are by Medela. I got these from Target. I can't remember how much they were for a pack of them. They were kind of expensive, I remember. So after I would use them once, I would put them in the fridge so that I could reuse them. Something that is so important to me, it was our nursing bras. Before I had Ford, I went to pee in the pod and I got some different ones. So I got these because I thought, oh, great, a black sexy bra. That's gonna be great for breastfeeding. So I like these, but when my breasts get really full, they kind of overflow out of these. So I wear these during the day or if I'm wearing a normal shirt that needs to be V-neck. These are by Notori. And uh, I can't remember how much they were. These were more on the expensive side. All um, breastfeeding bras are gonna do this so that you don't have to take the whole bra off. The bra that I lived in though, I got two of these also at Pee in the Pod. So these are by Pee in the Pod Intimates and these are size medium. I got this in nude and black and I'm telling you what, this was my absolute favorite bra. I lived in these, I still live in these and that's something that's really critical. A, company on Amazon called Hoffish or Hofish, I'm not for sure how you say that, that have very similar bras to these, kind of um, a hybrid between these two, that are like, you get three for like $20. I'm gonna link those also because I really, really love those as well. I also got these, this is like a bandeau that you can connect a pump to, like if you're gonna pump, which if it, me, pumping was a huge part of my breastfeeding experience. I'm gonna talk about that next. Um, but this one I got from Target. Uh, it wasn't very expensive. And I'll link all these below. And then this one I got that just connects onto the straps of um, your nursing bra that you're already wearing. And then you put your pumps through it. Um, 
I wore this one every once in a while, but I honestly found myself holding my pumps onto my breasts or using um, one of these willow pumps that are cordless that I would put into my bra. Always here, never sleep in your bras, but you're gonna see if you're a nursing mother that you are gonna have to sleep in your bra. So I got these sleep bras. I got these off of Amazon. I had about four of them. I have several of these because your bras are gonna get nasty with milk and with the creams and stuff like that. But I really loved this one for a sleeping bra. It's by Medela also, and I got an extra large in it. I continue to and have to wear a nursing pad every single hour of every single day. I was an overproducer. I'm like a normal producer now, normal to overproducer, but especially if you are an overproducer, you these are gonna be your best, your best friends. You put them into the bra and that keeps you from leaking milk everywhere and like soaking through your shirts and stuff like that. I went from being an overproducer to being like an underproducer at one point in time. So I overproduced to such a level that I produced 300 extra ounces of milk that I froze in the first like week and a half that I was home from the hospital. That is insane. That was my freezer supply. I eventually um, really tried to like level out and regulate my body so that I didn't overproduce that much because I couldn't sleep through the night even when Ford would. I was so engorged and I had knots in my breasts and it was terrible. Um, so overproducing, even though people are like that's a dream, it also has its own challenges, i.e. mastitis. So I almost got mastitis. I saved myself from getting it um, because I was lucky enough to have a nurse that came to my house and really helped me through it. So mastitis is basically um, like apparently the most painful thing ever if you've had it. Uh, they say it's just terrible. It's like a flu basically. So I was overproducing to such a level and I didn't know what to do and I was just like my boobs were starting to get hot, starting to get a little bit red and they had knots everywhere and they were literally like the biggest breasts I've ever seen in my life and I don't have huge breasts. The nurse came to my house and I was like this is what's going on. Can you like help me? I had knots everywhere. She was like okay you need to get in the shower right now and you need to massage these knots out. So I would take my hand, I would go around my breast, I would do like a, I would do this, I would do like an actual like kneading a knot out, I would do this all the way around my breast, all these different like massaging around to get those knots out and I continued to do that like once or twice a day um, until I felt like I got those knots out. And anytime those knots would come back or my breasts would start to feel like that again, I would do it again. I also would use hot towels. So I would heat up my tea kettle. I would pour those onto towels and put hot compresses on my breasts after I would feed forward. And I would massage all of that out where all of those knots were forming because if those knots get, to get infected, it turns into mastitis and you do not want that. Also, I took two diapers and I filled them with water and I put them in my freezer and I would sometimes alternate hot and cold. So depending on how bad you feel like it's getting, if you're about to get mastitis, if you do have mastitis, you need to go to the doctor and they can give you um, the directions on what to do next. But that's how I kept myself from getting it. I literally was on the border of getting it and I saved myself. So those are some great um, tips for that. So you're supposed to drink like 100 ounces of water a day or they say like three to four liters of water a day. Uh, I'm a terrible water drinker. I've really had to make myself do that. Some days I do not hit that. I'm still able to produce enough milk, so I feel fortunate for that. But I drink a lot of coconut water. I drink a lot of this uh, uh, electrolyte water. What was it called? Numa, it was called. Um, and I drink as much water as I possibly could. But that, and then they say, I don't know, different doctors say different things. An extra 300 calories a day, an extra 500 calories a day you have to make sure you're consuming enough food to continue to make breast milk. So now let's talk pumps. So I exclusively breastfed Ford, um, I don't know, it was for several weeks until I almost got mastitis and I realized I had to drain some of this milk out of my breasts. I explored the option of a pump pretty fast there in the beginning. And um, so I started pumping out all of the extra milk and freezing it. And I kept exclusively breastfeeding him. I didn't switch over to feeding him the pumped milk. I just kept storing it and storing it and storing it. Um, so I started out with this pump. I got it from Target. It was like 
270-ish. I have a full review of all the breast pumps I used um, on my baby must-haves videos. I'm going to link that below. This is a great pump. Um, it pumps into the bottles that you can actually travel with and feed the baby from. I really love this pump. Um, this one I also bought. This was actually on sale, I think, because it is opened. And we got this from Walmart for like 170 something so it was a great deal because typically they're like 300 ish This is the Medela Advanced. I like the suction on this and the latch a lot. It also pumps into those bottles. Like I said, watch that video for the full review. This is a breastfeeding video, so pumping's a part of it, so I wanted to mention it, but um, you can watch a full review of these on that other video. And then this is the Willow Pump. This is state-of-the-art, incredible. It's more expensive. It's gonna run you for something, um, but this doesn't have any cords. It pumps into the bag that you can then freeze it. Um, you can put it straight into the freezer. So it was awesome for me being an overproducer in the beginning. I got my milk supply so far up. Had tons of spare parts for all of these pumps that I ordered off of Amazon um, because there's always like you're in the middle of the night and like you're you, you got water in one of your tubes and stuff like that so you'll see that was something that really helped me to have those spare parts on hand now let's talk about underproduction because I think so many women deal with this. Women beat themselves up that they can't produce enough. Women are so like they stress themselves out and they cry and I didn't understand that and I'm so grateful that I went through that at about three and a half months or so because now I get the underproduction side of breast breastfeeding and how devastating that can be and how you feel like as a mother I don't know what it is about it but like you just feel like so defeated and like I felt so defeated during that time I was crying I was pumping all day trying to get my supply up I was taking all these supplements um, and I finally did get it back up but uh, it took a while and I burned through like a lot of my supply that was in the fridge and it was it was a really tough time. I started exercising, I went on a diet and I started doing the infrared sauna like sweat pod for a whole week and I didn't even realize it. And before I realized it, my supply was like plummeted and I was freaking out, did all those things. So I Googled and I asked people and they said, take this fenugreek. So I went to Whole Foods, started taking two of these a day, three times a day. I think it helped. I definitely smelt like a pancake. Then people, then I was like, uh, are there any other supplements? So then I looked into this company called Legendary Milk Supply and people tagged them on Instagram and they were like, you got, you should check out those, check those out. And I got this three pack. Um, there's also a blue one. I can't remember how much I paid for it, but these have different types of ingredients in it and they say different ones work for different women. So I went through and I would like add one of these instead of one of the fenugreek for like a week and then the next week I would add in another one and the one that really worked for me was this pink one, it's called Pump Princess and it has like um, nigella, sativa, dill and fennel in it. These are um, totally safe apparently they're made with organic ingredients these are none of this is sponsored by the way i want everyone to know that whenever i'm talking about baby stuff like that is not in my realm so all this is tried and true stuff so i just want to tell you about this because this really helped me so now i still continue to take this so i take two fenugreeks and then the next um the midday i'll take one of these and then at night i'll take one fenugreek and one of these I think you got to find your own combo with that, but that and pumping, you can never miss a session. If you're trying to get your milk supply back up or if you're trying to get your milk supply high, pump every three hours for at least 12 minutes. I usually would do 15 minutes. Even if you're not getting anything, um, just keep doing that. I did pump every three hours and it hurt and, it, and I was sore and I was like crying and I was, it was terrible. It was terrible, but I got my milk supply back up, and now um, I, I pump enough to feed him throughout the day. I don't pump tons of extra, which is actually great because it's leveled out enough to where I'm comfortable, but where I'm able to sustain him with the breast milk. Somebody wanted to be in this video. <laughs> yeah, you love being breastfed, baby. But any kind of food is fine for you, right? But you like that breast milk, okay. So this is where we spent 75% of the time um, that we existed the first three months of having Ford. So I got this little TV tray from Target across the street and I would put all my things on the TV tray and we would just exist here. So it's very important, I think, to have a rocker 
or somewhere that is your space. This is, look at this, this is you. I just want to share my experience. Breastfeeding was the most incredible experience for me. But like I said, no matter how you feed your baby, you are an awesome mom. Please leave comments. If something worked for you or didn't work for you, leave comments down below. I want this to be a community where people can support other people in this journey. Um, so many people supported me through this, and I feel like that's why I was able to be a success. So I hope yeah. that this helped you guys you want to see baby with fit? all your questions. Show me your baby fit. You ready? You want to try the back? What? Whoa. Two. Whoa. You gonna work your obliques? You can do that. Oh. And twist. And up. You didn't know squat. you were gonna get baby fit in the end of this video. Up and squat. <laughs> Let me see his face. Whoa.